What the hell is Jack in the Pack? Jack in the Pack was a spin-off series from Thomas the Tank Engine about vehicles who worked on a construction site. Think Bob the Builder, but their faces are grey, and instead of having Bob and Wendy, you have just Miss Jenny. There were 26 scripts written for Jack in the Pack, not counting the two episodes they had in Series 6 of Thomas to introduce them, but 26 scripts written for the Jack in the Pack series specifically. However, of the 26 scripts, only 13 of the episodes were ever actually made, as the series was cancelled by Hit Entertainment halfway through production. This probably had a lot to do with the fact that Hit also owned Bob the Builder, and having two preschool shows about anthropomorphic vehicles on a construction site was rather counter -intuitive. Intuitive, and so the pack was cancelled. This cancellation left 11 scripts unfinished for the series, and those 11 episode scripts were Alfie Has a Secret, Isabella Gets Steamed, Jack and Alfie Swap, Jack's Snow Rescue, Kelly's Heroes, The Sodor Treasure Hunt, The Importance of Being Patrick, All Work No Play, Jack and the Quack, Pop Goes the Diesel, Bossy Byron, Safety First, and No Bulldozer is an Island. And for over 20 years, fans waited and wondered what those episodes would have been about. That was until September of 2022, when Ben Gosling, you know, the same guy who released the Thomas Bible, released the Jack in the Pack outlines. After 20 years of being behind closed doors, Finally, the Jack in the Pack scripts were out. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the full scripts for every episode. They're more of a vague outline, and Safety First and No Bulldozers and Island are flat out missing, but for the most part, we have a pretty good understanding of what these cancelled episodes would have been. And so that's what we're going to go through today. We're going to find out if these episodes were maybe better left on the cutting room floor, or maybe we'll find out if there's some diamonds in the rough. Ladies and gentlemen, Boys and girls, this is the lost episodes of Jack and the Pack. Alfie has a secret. A new crossing at the children's school is being built. Isabella is delivering asphalt while Jack is helping to unload it. Jack drives up onto Nelson's trailer, but is surprised when Alfie drives up behind him. They don't need trenches dug at the school, quizzes Jack. It's a secret, replied Alfie. Soon Nelson brings Jack and Alfie to the building site, and at the site Alfie can be seen drilling a hole alongside the road. Jack and Isabella try to guess what Alfie is building, but all he'll say is, it's a secret. Soon the school is finished and Kelly puts up the signs into place, but Alfie's banksman grabs the sign and is revealed to be a hedgehog crossing, and Alfie's secret is revealed. I don't know why Alfie was keeping it a secret, but whatever. I think it's interesting that they mention Alfie was drilling because we never actually saw Alfie drill in the original series. However, he did appear with a drill in the CGI series, so perhaps they actually did make a drill prop for Alfie, but we just never saw it until CGI. Hmm, interesting. I think I need to mention the elephant in the room here, and that elephant is Bob the Builder. Because, yeah, this episode is incredibly similar to that episode of Bob the Builder called Bob Saves the Hedgehogs. Hell, I even used footage from the episode when talking about it. But the real reason I bring up this is because there are so many similarities between Bob and Jack that I simply cannot ignore. There's Kelly, the six-axle blue crane, there's the red dump truck, there's our plucky protagonist with a front loader and a back hoe, not to mention the similarities between Wendy and Miss Jenny, right down to their clothes choice. Yeah, for the most part I generally ignore the plagiarism questions that Jack and the Pack get, but in the case of the Hedgehog episode, I find it harder and harder to ignore the similarities. Anyway, on to the next episode. Isabella gets steamed. 
It's autumn on the island of Sodor, but Isabella is feeling left out. Because she's a lorry, she always has to drive away from the site. But whenever she shows up, she sees Jack and Alfie having fun without her. Even when she's driving along the beautiful countryside, she can't help but feel left out. Later, at the village fate, the vicar's traction engine breaks down, and someone needs to pull the float. Isabella doesn't want to because she doesn't want to miss out on the fun that Jack and Alfie are having, but eventually she does. And Isabella soon realises that she can create fun wherever she goes. Okay, so there's a few things I like here. Firstly, I think it's interesting that Trevor was going to be in this one. In fact, in Mud Glorious Mud, Trevor actually makes a cameo, which is funny since that was the other Elizabeth episode that she had in the series. I really like the dynamic here between Jack, Alfie and Isabella, and making it an awesome episode makes it that more special. Jack and Alfie swap. The pack are a demolition job. Oliver is pulling down walls with his claw, Byron is levelling the ground, and Ned is scooping up the bricks, and Isabella is bringing paving slabs. Jack is also busy working from one side of the site to the other. However, Alfie isn't nearly as busy. He is on the side of the site digging a trench by himself. That night, Alfie asks Jack if he can swap jobs. Jack likes the idea, and the next morning, their banksmen agree. Jack helps with digging the trench while Alfie helps with demolition. However, soon Jack is bored and Alfie is flat out, and both of them miss their old jobs. Later that night, Jack asks Alfie, could we swap back? But Alfie is already fast asleep to answer. Not too much to say about this episode, other than I like the fact that we get to see a scene with Jack and Alfie in their shed at night, which is something that I always wanted to see happen as a kid, so that's pretty cool. Jack's snowy rescue. It's winter on the island and all the pack have jobs to do. Byron is clearing the motorways, Ned and Oliver are to clear the school area, even Jack is clearing the car park in the town. However, Jack isn't given any jobs to do and is telling Patrick and Buster about it. Patrick and Buster both assure Jack. Suddenly, Miss Jenny comes out and tells Jack that a group of children are stranded up the mountain. Soon Jack is fitted with his snowblower and Miss Jenny and her dog, Mike, Oh, okay. Uh, travel up the mountain with Miss Jenny driving ahead. Eventually Jack loses sight of Miss Jenny and he comes to a fork in the road. Jack doesn't know which way to turn until he hears the barking of a faint dog in the distance. It's Mike! Jack follows the track and finds Miss Jenny's Land Rover stuck. Eventually she's freed and Jack make it to the children. Miss Jenny speaks kindly to Jack. Spot on Jack! I was worried there'd be a snow emergency and I'm so glad I kept the best snow machine free and Jack's cheeks go as red as his paintwork. This is one of the highest scope episodes ever. I love the bonding we get between Miss Jenny and Jack, it's so wholesome. And the fact that this was the only snow episode makes it that more interesting. I would have killed to have seen Jack with a snowplow too, even if Bob the Builder already did that. Anyway, next episode. Kelly's Heroes! Oh, this is going to be a good one. Kelly's Heroes. Jack and Alfie are working together on a viaduct building site. Alfie would dig the service trenches and Jack would go fetch the ballast for it. The route to the ballast was long and bendy, so Jack hurried. Meanwhile, Ned and Oliver were working on an elevation near the precipice. Oliver would break up the rock and Ned would load it into Monty. I haven't got all day, Monty roars to Ned. Oh, it won't be all day, says Ned innocently. Couple of hours at most. Kelly passes by this interaction when Jack comes racing along. Whoa, cowboy, says Kelly. Heavy rains have made the ground soft. Remember, safety first. I am being safe, replied Jack, and he raced on. Oliver overhears this interaction and reassures Kelly about Ned being safe. Now, Ned, you need to remember to be more careful, especially when going near the precipice. I know, Oliver, replied Ned as he moved ever closer to the edge. Jack arrived back with Alfie. It's clear Jack is taking longer than Alfie is to dig. As Jack races off, he thinks of finding a shorter way to get back to Alfie. Alfie shouts back to him, Remember, safety first, replies Jack. Meanwhile, Oliver is gently reminding Ned not to go near the precipice again. I know, replied Ned again. Meanwhile, Jack has got the ballast and is racing back to Alfie when he sees a shortcut up the embankment. Kelly and Isabella watch from afar. Are you going to do something about this? asks Isabella. I am doing something, Kelly responds. I'm letting Jack learn the hard way. Jack barely makes it halfway up the embankment to Alfie before toppling over. 
Kelly trundles over alongside. Whatever will Miss Jenny think, Jack asks. She'll probably think you failed the test, but learn the lesson, replies Kelly in a sympathetic tone. Oliver and Ned see this happen from up above. You don't want that to happen to you, says Oliver to Ned. I won't, replies Ned. Suddenly, Monty shows up for more stone. Ned asks Oliver for some more working space, and without thinking, Oliver backs up. And Oliver, don't get too close to the... But it's too late. Oliver is left hanging on the edge of the cliff in suspended animation. Would you like me to get some help? asks Ned. Yes, that would be nice, replied Oliver. Wow, what an amazing episode. I love the father-son dynamic between Kelly and Jack. I love the comedy between Ned and Oliver. It's such a shame they didn't make this one because I feel like it's a perfect Kelly episode. No offence to Kelly's windy day, but I feel like this did a far better job with showing what Kelly's character truly is. He's almost like a hybrid between Edward and Gordon. I love that. The development of Jack's character is also great. And I love the fact that the title is a reference to the movie Kelly's Heroes. That's just such a brilliant title, I love it. I love the Oliver and Ned dynamic. They almost remind me of Laurel and Hardy. Hey, wait a minute. Oliver Hardy is the first name and shares it with Oliver. And he's the smarter one, while Ned the idiot is much like Stan. And the original title of Oliver and Ned's solo episode together was called Another Fine Mess, which was a common phrase used in Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> Another nice mess you've gotten me into. Huh, uh, so I guess Ned and Oliver are the Laurel and Hardy of the series. No wonder they paired them up so much together. The Sodor Treasure Hunt One night, Kelly, the old and wise sage, is telling the story about the North Cove. As the pack are going to be working there the next day, some say pirates buried their treasure by the North Cove, says Kelly. Jack and Alfie could barely contain their excitement, they wanted to find the treasure. The next day at the cove, Jack and Alfie have a competition to see who can find the treasure the first. The hunt is on. The pair dig up all sorts of things. First, a rusty bike, then an old biscuit tin, an old coat hanger, an old bath, a pair of old shoes, but no treasure. Suddenly, Alfie hits something. Is it treasure? asks Jack. Just then, water starts bubbling out. Oh no, I've probably hit a pipe. But it wasn't a pipe. It was, in fact, mineral water. Alfie had discovered mineral water, and soon Miss Jenny arrived, and she declared that Alfie's discovery of mineral water is the greatest treasure of all. I don't really have much to say about this one. It's a cool pirate-themed episode, but I don't really care for it all that much. It's an alright episode, but I'm not going to be losing any sleep over the fact that they never made it. <laughs> the Importance of Being Patrick Patrick, the cement mixer, feels his skills are being taken advantage of and wants to do something important. No one ever appreciates my lovely concrete, he says. The packer at the park doing up the bandstand. Oliver digs the holes and Kelly plants the trees. Jack and Alfie dig the earth and Buster and Byron flatten it and Patrick pours the cement. Soon the job is done and the pack head back to the yard. But that night, Miss Jenny gets a frantic call saying that there are holes in the cement. Patrick is offended. Holes in my lovely cement, he says. It turns out an animal had walked through the concrete. Miss Jenny wonders how it can be fixed, but Patrick remembers an old recipe for quick drying cement that Miss Jenny's father taught him. Although it had a very short open time, because once it's set, it's set. So when Jack, Alfie and Oliver break up the cement, Patrick creates the new mixture. The next day, everybody waits in anticipation as a fat mayor with his huge scissors walk towards the stand. Thankfully, Patrick's concrete holds him and the bandstand is a huge success. I find it so weird that the plot of this episode hinges on a fat mare walking onto some cement. It's a bit weird. Not sure how they would have done that with the models, but regardless, I love quite a few aspects of this one. I love that we get to see Patrick in an episode. He's always been the forgotten member of the pack, and so it's nice to see that they had more plans for him, even if it was just more of the same. But my absolute favourite part of the episode is the mention of Miss Jenny's father, which wasn't even a part of the original series. I love the idea of the characters like Patrick and Kelly and Oliver having this extended history with Miss Jenny's father. It really gives the sense of lore that wasn't really honestly present in the final few episodes. All work, no play. 
at a building site, the pack are all in a good mood. That is, except for Byron, who's acting very serious as he levels the ground. He thinks the others should act just as seriously as he does. Hey, you two, get to work! We are working, replied Jack. It doesn't look like it to me, said Byron. Bossy Byron, replied Alfie. Byron continued to be serious with everyone all morning. Kelly was unloading Isabella when Miss Jenny arrived. And is me pack making a mother proud? She asked. Aye, we're a cracking crew, replied Kelly. And what are you lollygaggers at? She asked. Oh, we're right on time, replied Jack. And having a bit of fun too. Oh, lots, said Alfie. Miss Jenny then turned to Byron. He was cross. How can I do my work seriously when no one else seems to take their work seriously? Perhaps you need to try have a little fun too, Byron. You'd be surprised at how the time flies and you'd enjoy your work more. And with that, Miss Jenny drove away. Mmm, said Byron. Later, Byron was shoveling a pile of dirt. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What are you doing? asked the banksman. I'm doing the rumba, said Byron. The rumba? The rumba! Spot on, Byron. You'd make a mother proud, calls Miss Jenny from the other side of the yard. Go, Byron! shouted Alfie. And Byron soon realised that even a serious bulldozer could have a little fun too. This is interesting. In the original series, we never seen Byron's serious side. So, I like seeing that. It's a good moral too about, you know, loosen yourself up. And I love Byron's rumba line as well. That's so funny to me. <laughs> I also love how the title is a reference to The Shining. Like, it's just so weird that they'd reference a horror movie in, like, a children's show. But anyway. Here's Jane! Here's Jane! Here's Johnny! Jack and the Quack In the town of Maitwaite, there is a park with a duck pond. However, the park was poorly maintained, and so Jack, Alfie and Isabella are sent to put it right. Jack is cleaning the pond out when suddenly it bursts open. Jack was digging too hard and the ducks were flooded away. Jack felt bad. He spent the next few hours looking for the ducks, but he couldn't find them anywhere. Jack waited all night for the ducks to come back. As he waited, it rained heavily over that night. When Jack woke up the next morning, he hears Patrick talking to himself. Simple. All it needed was a little bit of concrete. Patrick had fixed the pond. But what about those ducks? Well, Jack's front bucket had filled with water overnight, and the little duckies had made it their new home. Oh, this is a very sweet episode. I would love to have seen. I loved what they were going for with Jack and the Ducklings. And I loved that we would have gotten to see more of Maithway Town too. It's a shame they didn't make this one. Pop Goes the Diesel Isabella is the only steam-driven lorry in the whole pack, while everyone else runs on diesel. One day, Isabella was delivering the diesel to the pack on site. Yuck! Can you smell that? Max said. Smells like stinky old steam lorries to me, Monty replied, and they both laughed. I'd rather smell coal than diesel, Isabella snapped back. Isabella chuffed away, but Max and Monty followed her. Steam engines are so old, I heard Miss Jenny's going to get rid of them and have them all replaced by diesels. About time too, says Monty. Steam lorries are rubbish. They can't haul nearly as much as us. Isabella tried to ignore them, but she couldn't help knowing that they were right. She couldn't haul as much as Max and Monty, and she actually started to wonder if Miss Jenny really was going to replace her. One day, Isabella was working when she heard a huge pop sound. What was that? She asked. Backfire, Monty grinned. Something a steam lorry would never do. Isabella felt more left out. Suddenly, all the diesels started to backfire. There must be something wrong with the new fuel, Jack called, but none of the diesels were able to go. They were all feeling unwell from the new fuel, and one by one, all the trucks looked at Isabella. I could go, said Isabella, if I wanted to. Please go, said Max desperately. We'll do anything. Isabella thought for a moment, then smiled. Who's the best truck on the whole island? asked Isabella. Uh, you, said Monty hopefully. And who's the best, steamies or diesels? said Isabella. Steamies, mumbled Max. And who's the most beautiful truck in the world? Isabella, said Max and Monty in unison. Isabella was very pleased with herself. She trundled off to get the new fuel. That night in the yard, all the diesels were feeling much better. Do you really think that steamies are better than diesels? asks Jack to Isabella. Of course not, says Isabella. I think we're all just trucks under our paintwork. Me too, said Jack. But my paintwork is much more better than Max and Monty, Isabella added with a grin. 
This episode is very similar to Thomas Saves Day. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they just reused that plot. Isabella Gets the Fuel is also something we've already seen, and the title itself is already an episode we've seen from Series 2. So honestly, I don't think we're missing out too much with not getting this episode, although I will admit that Elizabeth is quite the girl. She's almost like a mix between James and Emily in a weird way. Bossy Byron. Byron is a great big bulldozer. He loves to push things around. He loves to push gravel and sand and earth. But what Byron would like to be most of all is be in charge. One day, Miss Jenny came to the yard. Kelly needs repair and he's going to the fisher's yard, Miss Jenny said. You will all need to work extra hard to get the job done without him. If Kelly's gone, that means I'm in charge, Byron says to the other machines. Jack and Alfie knew this meant trouble. Jack and Alfie were digging out the foundations. Byron found Max and Monty on the other side of the site. I want the gravel tipped right here, Byron bossed to Max. I'll give him gravel, Max retorted. Byron looked around the building site. Everyone was working and doing exactly what he had told them to do. There must be some more bossing I can do, said Byron. Jack and Alfie were having a great time. They had nearly finished digging the hole for Patrick. Then the foreman came to see how they were doing. That's a lovely job, said the foreman. Then Byron found Max and Monty. They had tipped the gravel into the wrong place. I said over there, bossed Byron. The foreman asked us to put it here, said Max. But I'm in charge, said Byron. Byron pulled up to Jack and Alfie. What are you doing over here, he cried. You're supposed to be digging the foundations. But Patrick asked us to help, said Alfie. But I'm in charge, bellowed Byron. Byron drove away. He was very upset. Oh dear, said Patrick. I don't think Byron is very happy. I better go and see him, said Jack. When Jack found Byron, he looked very sad. Nobody likes me, moaned Byron. That's because you're too busy bossing, said Jack. You should ask nicely, like Kelly does. So, if I ask nicely, like Kelly does, do you think I could still be in charge? Of course, said Jack. Byron came back to work. And this time, he didn't boss and always asked nicely. All the machines were pleased to work with such a nice bulldozer. And they soon finished laying the foundations. Well done, everyone, said Byron. Thank you all for being such good workers. Just then, Miss Jenny returned with Kelly. They thought the machines had done a grand job. Byron was the most pleased to see Kelly. I don't think I want to be in charge anymore, said Byron. I don't like asking nicely, he added. Okay, so it's interesting how Byron comes off as a bit of an arsehole in this one. <laughs> in a way, it almost ruins Byron's character for me personally, as I always thought of him as very virtuous, but I guess that's what Kelly's for. Kelly's the good leader, while Byron is not. But to be honest, I'm kind of glad we never got to see this one, because I think it kind of ruins Byron's character for me personally. What a prick! <laughs> So, as said before, we have the outline for 11 episodes, but the last two, Safety First and No Bulldozer is an Island, we don't have the outlines for. All we know is that Safety First would have been a Max and Monty episode about them not being safe, and No Bulldozer is an Island would have been about Byron sinking. But that doesn't mean we can't speculate on what these episodes could have been about. So, here's what I think the last episodes could have been about. Safety First. I like to think Safety First would have been a redemption story for Max and Monty, because you'll notice that Max and Monty never actually got a lead role themselves. They were always the antagonists of the story, the troublemakers who caused the problems, but I like to think Safety First would have started out with the usual Max and Monty causing trouble for the other characters, but then something really serious happens and Max and Monty actually end up saving the day. Kind of like that Bill and Ben episode called Heroes, where Bill and Ben start out, you know, messing up, but then when shit gets real, Ben and Ben come to the rescue of the quarry workers and I think in a similar way like maybe there's a huge rock slide and Max and Monty have to get all the workers out the quarry and then by the end of the episode Max and Monty become heroes which would be a great story for them they start out as bullies throughout the series but in the last episode they actually end up saving the day a perfect episode for Max and Monty okay now on to the last episode of Jack in the Pack no bulldozer is an island now this was going to be the series finale of Jack in the Pack, 
So I'd like to think that they would have done something really special for it. Like maybe have the One Friendly Family song play at the end. Or maybe try have all the characters in it or all try play a role. The episode starts out as a normal day on the building site. When suddenly a pipe bursts and Byron's trench starts to fill up with water. Alfie is the first one to try and rescue Byron. Which you know would be a nice callback to when Byron rescued him. But of course Byron is too heavy for Alfie to get out. Soon Oliver tries to pull him out. Then Kelly is well, but Byron is still just too heavy, and one by one, every pack member joins in to pull Byron out until eventually everyone is pulling. And I mean everyone Patrick, Isabella, Jack, Ned, even Max and Monty join in until eventually the whole pack manage to pull Byron out. Miss Jenny arrives just in time to see the whole pack pull Byron out, and she exclaims, Spot on, gang, you'd make a mother proud. The pack are exhausted but happy. Jack beats his horn. We're a cracking crew, he shouts, and as the pack celebrate, the music fades into the friendly family song. And, uh, yeah, that was the 11 lost episodes of Jack and the Pack. Something I have yet to see anyone cover on YouTube. It was a real blast going through these episodes. I learned so many more things about Jack and the Pack from the research on this video. Like Miss Jenny's father was apparently going to be mentioned in canon. Or Kelly being a father to Jack and having a far more intimate relationship with Isabella than I first realised. Seriously, they're always paired together. Same with Ned and Oliver being the Laurel and Hardy of the series, or Patrick apparently getting more lead roles. This video was so much fun to make. The link to the Ben Gosling outlines of the lost scripts is in the description. I also want to give a quick shout out to my friend Will Thomas, who looked over the script for this video and is making his own Jack in the Pack retrospective. When his video goes out, I will link it in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. You are all truly a cracking crew.